Hi, I'm Joe Roth. At New Jersey Sharing Network, we're committed to saving and enhancing people's lives through organ and tissue donation and informing people about our life-saving mission. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's credit unions, banking you can trust, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities, the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, founded by the Jewish community, and by Celgene Corporation, committed to improving the lives of patients worldwide. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger, powering NJ.com, and by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We are here in Atlantic City. This is the 2013 NJA convention. I'm here with Wanda Swanson, who is the executive producer of an extraordinary series celebrating its 20th anniversary. It is called? Classroom Close-Up New Jersey. 11 Emmys. Now, for those who do not know, Classroom Close-Up is all about what? Public schools and the great things that are happening in the public schools, from teachers to students to administrators to parents, everything about public schools. It's the best of Classroom close up here from the NJEA convention in Atlantic City. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We are here at the 2013 New Jersey Education Association convention. They've been coming to Atlantic City since 1905. They've been doing the conventions way back in the 1850s. And let me tell you, we are proud to introduce the uh, new, the incoming executive director of the NJEA, Ed Richardson. How are you doing? And congratulations. Thank you, Steve. And uh, thanks for being here at our convention. It's this really thrilling to have you here. Well, I'll tell you what, we are here, our colleagues at NJTV and Mike Schneider, my colleague and good friend, is going to be here a little bit later. But Great. you know a little bit about the connection between the NJEA and public broadcasting, do you not? Yes, I do. Um, my background at NJEA started in our communications division. I had a job where I was responsible for our partnerships with other organizations, including public, public television and public media, really. And uh, back in the days of NJN, uh, we had... Um, NJN, the precursor to, to NJTV. NJTV right? um, we had a relationship where we underwrote uh, some of their uh, public interest programming, uh, the news and sure. election coverage and so forth. And uh, about 19 years ago, we were looking to try and uh, expand that partnership. And at the time, we were producing a show called Classroom Close-Up New Jersey. The Classroom Close-Up series that celebrates the 20th anniversary as we speak. 11 Emmys later, go ahead. 11 Emmys later. One of those Emmys was won when the show was actually being aired on through paid programming. We were right. buying paid TV slots. So we were convinced that we were producing an excellent program that very few people were watching because it's very hard to promote that way. Sure. And uh, NJN partnered with us uh, through a co-production agreement. And um, the rest is sort of history. I mean, our, our experience as a partner with public television has been um, nothing but stellar. As you said, 11 Emmys later, sure. um, the program uh, has a, a broad audience now. And it fulfills a really important mission, I think, in terms of educating the public about public education and the wonderful things going on in our schools. Curious about this, because our partnership at the Caucus Educational Corporation, together with our partners in public broadcasting and featuring Classroom Close-Up, is to tell stories, mm -hmm. is to try to get beyond all the noise sometimes uh, down in the state house and, and focus more on educators and people connected to education. That's a lot of what you're about. Yes. Um, you know, education tends to be boiled down as many public policy areas do to sort of sound bites. It's very hard to tell the story of public education correctly in a sound bite. And classroom close up and other uh, opportunities like that give us a chance to really dig in a little bit more and, and really explain um, how this works, how the business of education takes place and uh, you know what, what's successful. And the uh, executive producer from day one, 
is in fact Wanda Swanson. Is that true, day one? Day one. How'd they get you? Well, I came from Wyoming with video background. And they, when they interviewed me, they asked me more about my video background than I was applying for a job as a reporter, editor. And uh, I, I'd been on staff a year, and they came to me and they said, how about a TV show? And I'm like, <laughs> I'd love to. And we decided we wanted to keep it a pure show about what's going on in the public schools. It's not a, a talking head. We go into the schools and we cover everything you can possibly imagine about schools. Bus drivers, uh, custodians, uh, cafeteria workers, teachers, students, everything so you can imagine. So classroom close up, and by the way, uh, for those of you who watch one on one on a regular basis, watch the Caucus Educational Corporation programming on our partners WNET and, and NJTV, you know that we've been featuring uh, Classroom Close Up and those who are featured in that series for a long time. How do you find these people? Do they find you? How does it work? That's interesting because when we first started talking about the show, we went to NEA because they had a show. The National and Education Association. The National Education Association and they said the hardest thing is going to be finding stories. From day one, <laughs> I, they contact me. And I have stacks and stacks and stacks of requests for us to do stories. Do they say, what about me? Do they say, what about me? Or no. what about someone else? No. Uh, sometimes it's, I've got, I know a teacher that's doing some great work. Some of us, I have some students that are doing some awesome work. Or they've got a program. And they're so proud of it. Whether it's a math program or, or art or I anything. They want us to come and highlight their kids. Question. Uh, this series has been on the air for 20 years. Um, and before it started airing on NJTV, the public television station in New Jersey, it was on the predecessor, uh, New Jersey Network. How important is it, from your perspective, as the executive producer of the series, and we're thrilled to be partners with you, how important is it to have a collaboration, a partnership with public broadcasting? You know, it's funny because when we first decided to go to PBS, I was against it because I was afraid that they were going to try to control. Because when we were paying for on air, we had control. Bef you pay, let's clarify, pay before PBS. Before PBS, we were paying. Another network. We were paying now other networks. Yes. And uh, I went kicking and screaming only to find out how wonderful PBS is because we had the same goals of, of, of educating the public and with pure non-political, uh, idealistic ideas. The, the viewers of PBS are the kind of viewers we want. Nobody's making money off it. Nobody's making money That's not off what it is. it. And, and what, what happens for the educators and others? Because they're not just teachers. All, all kinds of people get featured in Classroom Close-Up, close right? Right. What do they get from it? When we walk into a school, that's even better than seeing the final story. We walk in and everybody feels special. The kids feel special. The teachers feel special. The school employees that we're highlighting feel special because someone's coming in and showing positive. They're used to the media coming in and, and talking about what's going wrong. And we're going in and showing what's going right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get old, does it? No, not a second. And I don't know how many times I've been on, on, on a site and I've cried because I see such dedicated teachers and kids. And, and, and they, the kid interviews are great. Fifth graders, they're, they're better interviews than the adults. Why do you think? Uh, they're not afraid. They're, they're just talking to you. They're not thinking, oh, am I going to make someone mad? Am I saying the politically correct thing? They're just talking about what's going on and how much they love the teacher and how much they love learning. And looking back over the past 20 years of classroom close up, I mean, there are too many highlights to packaged together, but here's what's happened. Wanda and her team have actually tried to do this. As the executive producer of this series from day one, um, you've put together what? Or tell folks they're about to see a five minute video that tries to do what? It's the highlights of the last 20 years. Uh, the, the people that we've seen, we've interviewed President Clinton, uh, celebrities, uh, amazing teachers, uh, moments that make you cry and make you laugh. And it's the best of 20 years. Hi everyone, welcome to Classroom Close-Up New Jersey. I'm Marie Bliston. It happened 20 years ago. The very first stories were collected for a series about the great things in public schools around our state. Before we went on the air, 
we reached out to teachers and school staff, asking them to tell us about their successes. Story ideas began to roll in, and that year, we featured a number of them on our show. 20 years later, that number is 1,356 and counting. We've met over 8,000 students in more than 1,200 schools. And now, like my predecessors, the five show hosts before me, Michael Johnson, Edie Fulton, Joyce Powell, Barbara Kashishian, and Wendell Steinhauer, I will have the pleasure of presenting a new generation of students and educators to you. But before we move forward, let's take a look back at some of our favorite moments from the past 20 seasons here on Classroom Close Up. Hello, my name is Michael Johnson. I am the host of Classroom Close-Up New Jersey. I'm Edie Fulton. Hi, I'm Joyce Powell. I'm Barbara Kishishian. I'm Wendell Steiner. I'm Marie Bliston. Mr. President, welcome to the program. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. We have to give you the tools to make the most of your own lives. Education, frankly, is a linchpin of maintaining opportunity for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Buzz Aldrin. The emphasis today is what we call STEM, S-T-E-M, science, technology, engineering, and math. I think you can, you can get the best education possible uh, at, a, at, at a public school. I feel very good about education the things that were available when I was a kid that encouraged me and made me, gave me confidence to become a professional in the entertainment industry. And please, please. When I juggle, I feel happy and accomplished. I feel like I can do something right. Top of the morning to you. Stay tuned for a very special classroom close-up. In this sanctuary, the monarchs are clustered on the barks, on the trunks, on the bark. We were in the midst of them and they cascaded about us. This experience will make what I now teach have so much more meaning. It empowers the students to think and to become part of the project as opposed to experiencing it only through reading it. It's a program for everybody. Come on! Without great teaching, you're not going to get good education. Just not, because education is personal. They don't need to come in and find a grumpy bus driver. I'm not cranky, and I'm not mean. She's like a mom. She's like a second mother to us. Our goal here on Classroom Close-Up has been to share the wonderful stories that are happening every day in New Jersey's public schools. Friend. Friend. I am so proud of my students. They have gone out and each and every presentation, they get better and better. Two airplanes crashed into the Twin Towers. Crashed, crashed, crashed into these two strong buildings. I was a drummer since I was about two. You know, my mom bought me my first drum set. You know, I, I wasn't that good. I tried to play with certain songs, and I've just gotten better over the years. Well, with the mountain um, in life, students um, overcome um, major obstacles all the time. And so the mountain itself symbolizes the challenges that they face every day. I want to show my mom I'm something. My goal is to be a teacher. I want you to understand I'm more different than you. I just want you to be my friend. I always wanted to be a teacher from the time I was a little girl. And just something about the special needs population was just kind of drew me towards wanting to help people with 
you know, more disabilities. Well, one woman who has certainly been inspiring, lifting, and motivating literally thousands of students for over 62 Quick years time. in the Patterson School Ready, District go. is with me right here today. It's Emily Rome. My main and only question is this, what inspires you to keep going? They say, you know, everybody is leaving after five years. Everybody is burned out. And of course, I always tell them, nobody is burned out because the kids are wonderful. You're burned up, honey. Most of us are, are parents and, uh, you know, we're mothers and wives and family have family members. And, you know, the, the school is the same way. It's kind of like your family. Some of the chemos make me lose my hair. Due to my hair loss, I've developed quite a cool hat collection, though. Geocaching is a lot like scavenger or treasure hunting. It's fun, but the real prize is what students learn. This was the largest storm in the state's history. It affected all um, aspects of life, more so in some communities uh, than others, but it certainly affected schools on a broad um, scale. Children, this is Sister Sadie, the reading lady, and I come to bring reading to you. I guess the secret is to look forward and not worry about how high up I am. I never thought that what I do was a gift. Teach. I think it is. Steve Adovato on location here at the 2013 New Jersey Education Association Convention in Atlantic City. They've been coming here to Atlantic City since 1905. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of a fabulous series called Classroom Close-Up. We celebrate uh, educators, others who make a huge difference in the classroom. Let me introduce our special guest today. She is Colleen Weiss Magasic. She is a biological sciences teacher at the Great West Milford Township High School. Good to see you. Hi. Is it not a fact, before we see this clip from Classroom Close-Up, you did not plan to go into teaching? No, I did not. Is it not a fact you wanted to be a doctor? I did. What happened? I did student teaching for something to fall back on. And? I loved it. I, I, <laughs> I know, it sounds silly, but I it would, doesn't sound on, silly. on Fridays I couldn't wait for the weekend to be over so I could go back on Monday and do it again, and then I got really excited thinking they were actually going to pay me you to do this. You said that to your husband, didn't you? I did, I did. You said they pay me for this. And every once in a while when I complain that it's a miserable day, he says to me, why do you think they call it work? And I say, it's never been like work. This is my 24th year. 24. Yeah. And by the way, uh, two of your sisters who are here, of the eight siblings in your family, three yeah. are educators, right? Yes. Um, but let me do this. Set, let's set up this clip. This clip is about an initiative. Um, you won the HIP Award. The, the HIP Award, the full name uh, is Frederick the, L. HIP. Named after the former director uh, of yeah, the NJEA. Yeah, Dr. HIP, who's director of NJEA. It's the Excellence for Education grant. And it was created for innovative programs in education. And so our program is fifth graders working with high schoolers. And the fifth graders are growing trout in the classroom. And the high schoolers are taking them out in the field and doing stream studies with them. And then they come to the high school and they dissect fish with them. And then the high schoolers do some of their own research in, separate from that, independent can we see from this? that. Absolutely. You, well, we've seen it. Do you want to let everybody else see it? Absolutely. We can do that? Yep. Want to introduce it? So here's our clip from Classroom Close-Up on Swimming Upstream. You're taking my job. Cut it out. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Today we're at Westbrook Park making science come alive. We have uh, fifth graders and high school students coming together. 
The high school kids are really great mentors to, the, to my fifth graders. Uh, we get together with them a couple times a year, and uh, they really get excited to come and see the, the high school students, and I think the high school students as well. It gives them kind of like a, a little buddy, a, a, you know, a little, little friend to come out here and show them how to do things and take the science at their level and bring it down to our level and show where we're going. Oh, there's a snail. Yeah. Oh, look at that one. We found two spiders and a worm. So when we arrive here, the students set up their stations. Um, we break up into groups. They introduce themselves to each other, and then they head down to the stream. We're doing some stream testing. We were here in the fall testing water temperature, water quality, um, pH level. They take a water sample back up to the pavilion, and then they look for macroinvertebrates. Once they get up to the pavilion, they start looking through, trying to find evidence of water quality, and different macroinvertebrates have different water quality requirements. So we're looking for the ones that are going to have a high water quality requirement because trout require good, clean, cold oxygen lead in water. Mr. Rennie always wanted trout in his classroom. And so I was aware of the Frederick L. Hip grant program. And when the application was available for us to do, I went ahead and wrote the grant. And we got funded. The first thing it paid for was Mr. Rennie's trout. I'm currently growing some trout in my classroom. We got them from eggs. And the idea is to release them into um, a trout stream in the spring. And the stream that we have selected is fed by the stream here at Westbrook Park. And we are looking to see what kind of water quality we'll be feeding into the stream to make sure that the trout that we will release will have success uh, in, in the wild. Some of the misnomers about teenagers are just so destroyed when you see them together with younger students. They're kind and they're generous and they're great role models and they just really look after the kids and work closely with them and it allows them to kind of revisit their own childhood and you know get excited about things that they used to be excited about. For the younger kids they have, they have these role models that they look up to. I think that it's really simple to get kids outside to do things. All you need to do is have a question that you want them to answer. They're kind of watching something and they're collecting data. It doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to do it. It's just put on your shoes and go outside. Kind of like my mom used to say. So let me get this straight. Now your mom used to say exactly what? Put on your shoes and go outside. Is that a lot of what it is? That's a lot of what it was when we were young. That's not a lot of what it is for kids today. And that's one of the reasons that I felt so passionate about, do, and feel so passionate about doing things that get students outside. Mm. They, don't, they can't tell a maple tree from an oak tree. They, can't, they, they don't understand the beauty of nature and how it works together. And so this project in particular, students go to the stream, they look at the water quality. As they're looking at the water quality, they're thinking about the trout. The high school students understand the relationship of the trees to the water and what that water quality means. The fifth graders understand what trout need because they're raising them, and then they come together and just have this great conversation. We have uh, boys who are 9 and 11 in the public schools in Montclair, but I also have a son who's much older. And I think to myself, how great it is when they're interacting. What's it like for you to see those high school kids with the fifth graders? What's that like? It's amazing. It's the first time that we had fifth graders come to the high school for dissection. There were 48 students dissection in the room of, of fish. Go ahead. There were 48 students in the room a bunch of adults and you could have heard a pin drop. Everybody was focused, the high school students are supportive, they direct the fifth graders but they don't do it for them, the fifth graders look up to them, it excites them about science, it's every stereotype about high school students is broken down right at that moment and you just see these really caring individuals who are knowledgeable, experts in their field and they're just excited to be that. How do you see your role in all that? I'm a facilitator. What does that mean? I set the stage for them to explore, and then I guide them through that exploration, but I don't tell them what they should find, and I don't tell them where they should go with that. Mm -hmm. And so I explain to them how to do the dissection, and then I help them as they're identifying the parts, mm -hmm. but I don't say to them, okay, do this and this and this, and then stop, because it's more exciting if it's their discovery. Question before I let you out of here. A series like Classroom Close-Up, celebrating its 20th anniversary, a great series that can be seen on our, our sister station, our partners at NJTV, the public 
television station in New Jersey we're proud to be a part of. How important is a series like that? Extremely. It, it just puts in the public eye how great education is, how excited teachers are, how many wonderful things are going on in the classroom. There's just so much positive energy in education. And unfortunately, we don't always see that. Mm. But that's what we need to see. That's what we need to embrace. Kids are learning. Teachers are excited. We need to see that. And finally, a convention like this is great because? Rejuvenates you. It's like Does a little it? shot in the arm. Yeah, You've absolutely. You've been coming here for a few years now? Uh, just a couple. But still? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. If nothing else, you pick up on the enthusiasm and you go back and think, I can do this. I want to introduce the president of the NJEA, Wendell Steinhauer. Wendell, put in context the 20th anniversary of Classroom Close-Up, 11 Emmys. 11 uh, that's Emmys, the other yeah. reason we're celebrating a great <laughs> television series. You know it well. Talk about it. Well, I was a host uh, of Classroom Close-Up for the last four years. Uh, it's a great time. It's great to go out into the schools and see all the great things that are happening at doesn't always make the news sometimes, so uh, we, d we go in and we look at things that you don't see every day, and it's, you know, there's a lot of things, tear-jerking things, exciting things. It's showcasing public schools at its best. And why do so many teachers come down here every year? What they're looking for, well, first of all, it's to keep up on their profession. Uh, it's to get the latest and greatest ideas. We have a high-tech hall there, you know, everything is infused with technology showing teachers how to do it because you know one of the big things is as education moves through everybody has a new idea a new reform idea like let's get it in in but nobody does the training to bring them up so that's what they're getting here that professional development that 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 can it, we're actually the ones that are teaching it we have teachers over there showing them how to use classroom smart boards and technology it's one really of the things great. i feel every time i'm down here is energy passion enthusiasm and everybody here learns Listen, Wendell, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank Good you. luck in your presidency. We look forward to engaging you in more spirited dialogues on the issues of the day involving education. I look forward to Great it. Stuff. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you, Steve. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's Credit Unions, PSE and G, the New Jersey Education Association. Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by Celgene Corporation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. We can see it. This day has never been closer. Today, thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, hundreds of thousands with blood cancer are living a normal life. We're almost there. We're making cures happen. Join us.